welcome everybody to another episode of the nonprofit show. We're really excited because today is another and albeit rare episode uh, that we do called Nonprofit Thought Leader. And today we have Ann McCauley Lopez back with us, somebody that I love working with. I love her energy and her, her mind and the things that she brings to our sector. And today we're going to talk about Chat GPT and your nonprofit, how you can be looking at this tool. And, uh, you know, we went right to the source. Anne is a writer, agency content writer. I mean, that's the name of her business. And so this conversation is going to be really powerful because we want to find out really what she thinks and, and how we can navigate this whole thing. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, is off today, but she'll be rejoining us. We want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who really join with us day in and day out. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. Also super, super cool. And we have a new um, app out and it is so marvelous. Our team at the American Nonprofit Academy led by Kevin Pace put this together. You can download um, this app. You can wherever you like to, to get your, your um, apps or you can even take a quick screenshot here with this QR code. Of course, you can find us on our podcasts and all of our streaming broadcast uh, platforms. More importantly, we have Anne McCauley Lopez back with us. <laughs> I love that. I love that image. Agency <laughs> content writer. You know, it's so funny. Anne, I was thinking about this this morning that, you know, for all your wisdom and all the things that you've been able to talk to us about, it's been fascinating to see how they've grown in concert and in harmony with tech. And I was thinking about that. And then I was like, and today we're talking about chat GPT. I mean, <laughs> so moving the concept of communication, how we share our stories, but at the heart of it, and it's really become a tech issue. It is, it is. Um, chat GPT is, it's moving fast. Yeah. And I think there are, we talked about it, there are people who are innovators and they move fast with the technology. And then there's others of us who are later adopters or ask some questions, kind of test it out and see where it fits. And uh, for nonprofits, I think we, some of us will lean one way and some of us will lean the other way. I think there's a caution. We have to express some caution, use caution when implementing anything new right? I mean, we have to be careful about everything. We're all worried about everybody having a website or social media or <laughs> uh, donations through Facebook or through apps. I'm still not like, I don't, I love that you have an app. I'm going to try that one out. I don't use a lot of apps, but I'm very excited. But it's those kind of things, right? That are tech-based and we wonder, can we use it for our organization? And I, And this is one of the biggest ones and it's moving really fast, which is, I don't know about you, but it's a little scary to me, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I keep hearing about, like, it used to be back in the day, you know, your technology had to change every four years, and then it moved to two years, and then it was like, you know, updates that we could be doing digitally, and it would be updating throughout your machines, um, and now it's like down to hours, you know, and then, it really and then is. reading like chat GPT, the, the iterations are like now 72 hours on some of these things, and so it's astonishing um, and I think it's really an important thing to be watching and to be understanding and learning about it because it's not going away. Um, so let's dig into this concept first and foremost. ChatGPT, you know, there's so much about it. We're not going to go and, and get into what it is and, and, and uh, explain it that way. But we're really going to be talking today more about the stewardship and the management of it. Um, we were talking in the green room chatter, the fear of jobs always comes up in the conversation. Oh my gosh, the robot robots are taking over and we won't be working. Nobody will be working. What do you say to that? 
I say what I thought is there are some CEOs that came out recently and said that, and I kind of, they weren't very specific. Like what jobs is chat GPT's artificial intelligence taking? Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. So that was part of it. Uh, the other thing was I thought about it from the perspective of when we got self-checkout at the grocery store mm -hmm. and with, oh my gosh, everybody works at a grocery store. It's union, it's good pay, it's a great job, you know, for job growth, all these people will be out of work. No, my grocery store in my city is all self-checkout and there are people walking around and are very helpful about products and they keep the shelves stocked and they help when the automated system doesn't work or you buy a bottle of wine, you know, they check your ID and all that. So I don't, I, I think the jobs will shift. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think we'll have different jobs. We had websites and now we have website designers. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I agree with you. I think that it's not an either or. I think that um, it just changes the way we think and the way we work. And I think, you know, you and I are on the same page about communication. You know, we, we think about this because of who we are in our careers. Um, I, I feel like you're my soul sister in that, you know, so it's the words and it's how we communicate. Um, but for me, and <laughs> there's still the human element. I mean, we still need an editor, if you will. We still need that person that you run it up the flagpole, as they say, and you get things checked. And so I've been, I completely agree. I completely agree. And it's not just because that's my business either. <laughs> I, know. I think as a whole, when we talk about nonprofits, a lot of times we're telling stories mm -hmm. and we can't tell a story of those we serve with a bot, mm -hmm. it, you know, maybe some basic content. Maybe uh, we use the technology in the little responses at the bottom of our website. Are you interested? Tell us what you need. You know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But ultimately we're telling stories and that bot isn't going to be able to tell the story we can use tools like Grammarly, which are AI based to do a grammar check or a spell check. I also put it into good old Microsoft Word because it also has a plagiarism check. I've experimented and uh, had articles, just dump them right out of chat GPT, put them in a plagiarism checker and it is, it comes up as original content. Wow. I'm wondering how long does that last if we're using that raw data? If someone else goes in and types the same thing, yeah. I did, you know, how to donate to the Red Cross. And it was a beautiful article and it hit all the points and it probably took it right from their website because it knows this large entity. Mm -hmm. Could the Red Cross take that and put it on their website? Probably. It may even be there in some form, probably, right? I mean, yeah, right. now, now I have to tell you, <laughs> I have to tell you, I took American Nonprofit Academy and it gave me some sort of like nonprofit certification. So I took the word Academy and dove in on that. So it's not perfect. So we do need humans. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, even if we go to, um, if it is a great blog post, if it's American Red Cross in Phoenix, Arizona, or whatever city you're in, you want to put your affiliate information in that article, right? Like yeah. there's, there's some branding and personalization that happens that ChatGPT is not doing yet. I say that with caution. <laughs> yet. Yet. Well, so there is, it is definitely, it is definitely editing. And some of it is a, is a chunk of the writing as well. Yeah. Yeah. For those stories. It seems to me that, um, <clears throat> I love that you use the word tool and, um, it seems to me understanding like how it works within a bigger picture and not just the actual specific, what is it going to spit out, but how it can work for you. And I'm really interested to hear more about this. I mean, you bring up the um, piece of like, what are other people talking about or what do other people want to know? And I remember when we first met you three years ago and we had you on, you gave us the tip about using Google to, to, to research, what are the questions that people are asking? And I thought that was genius. Can you do the same thing here with that? Sure, in fact, I compared, um, I asked it for ideas related to the power of blogging and it came up with a list. And there were a couple things that I hadn't thought of. There were 
uh, which I thought was interesting. And it didn't bring up some other items. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, when I use it as a tool, I use it for, I've used it for idea generation. So tell me about this, but also use those other tools like Google and Google's it. That's, it, that's the AI that it, there's AI behind that. Yeah. I watched a webinar and he talked about how Google has moved from like a literal translation of what you put in the search engine. And I was like, oh my gosh, there were times when we had to say, what, how do you make a pizza? What is in uh, you know, like whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it would come up literal or it would come up with gibberish because people were doing things on the internet with keywords and stuff that we don't have to get into. And then it moved to how do you make a pizza? And now it's, you just put pizza in and it's pizza near me, how to make a pizza. What is pizza dough? Can I make gluten-free pizza and all these different things? And each of those we can, uh, and that's all AI. That's that's Google changing its algorithm. It's Google Google's technology learning. What are we asking, and how are we how are we humans asking it to uh, create answers that um, that are useful to us, that are relevant to us? Mm -hmm. That helps too, where we use those best practices of blogging. We combine all our tools, and then we're coming up higher in the search engine results mm -hmm. how do you donate to or the nonprofit podcast you know all of all of the things we're doing in terms of the structure of the website and the content we're producing chat gpt can be used like we use that google tool or, or in conjunction with it mm -hmm. and in conjunction with other seo tools search engine optimization tools that we've talked about like keywords everywhere uber suggests semrush those kind of things that the super seo experts use um but we can combine those and tell those stories, but also use those keywords and answer those questions that people are asking or that chat GPT is saying people are asking. You so know, we still use it, but I think we've got to be strategic. Yeah. I, I sure. think it's interesting that you, you have helped us draw the, the arc of, we have already been working with AI. This is not chat. GPT is yeah. not at the forefront of this. This is, just using that same technology and i love that you drew that back to how we used to use google we would i would yeah i remember you full sentences and then you'd go back oh no wait let's change that and now you literally can put in one word and it yeah that's, I that's remember, you had to say what is the cap you know like it was these long yeah. sentences and if it didn't do it you're like oh i gotta try something else yeah what? and you got creative but now it just no so i don't know if, I don't, yeah. maybe we've gotten lazy but <laughs> Uh, well, a little bit of both. We use it differently. <laughs> yeah, knowing how to use our technology. Um, talk to us a little bit about this, because this seems to be one of those things. I mean, you and I have talked offline about this, and that's creating social media posts. So many nonprofits that I speak with, it's one of the questions that comes in a lot to the Friday Ask and Answer episodes. How do I manage blog posts? How do I get this content created social media posts where do they live within the chat gpt ecosystem i guess there uh i came across an article i have and i know you mentioned the article i wrote and i'm pretty sure the resource is linked in there um when you just, just google it chat gpt prompts okay. and it was an article that included Hashtag prompts, social media prompts. So I conducted a little experiment and I, this is exactly what I put in, social media post about nonprofit gala. And it actually pushed out a, a pretty good post. It says, looking for a way to support a great cause while enjoying a night of elegance and entertainment. Join us for our annual nonprofit gala on, this event will feature blah, 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 in support of our mission to blank. It says, insert mission. Oh. Don't miss the opportunity. And it included hashtags. So, of course, the next thing I did was I went in and I said, okay, let me see what it can give me for those hashtags. Yeah. So it could, um, I asked it also for social media posts for, uh, for blog writer for small businesses in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I am. Um, and a lot of them were salesy, but if you're looking for a call to action mm -hmm. post once a week, which is like the 80, 20 rule, 
then you just grab one of these. It gave me 10. It would have kept going or, or had more. And it says, hey, Charlotte, small business owners, are you struggling to keep up with your blog content? Let me help you out. I offer affordable blog writing service tailored to your business needs. Contact me to learn more. Wow. Uh, I don't. I don't know that I could have written a better one. And then you put your link or you, you know, phone right. number or email. Mm -hmm. So I think it can really ease that pressure mm -hmm. of creating social posts that we can have some that are generated like this. Cause that's a great one. There's other ones that are fantastic in here. The hashtags on that Gallup post, instead of saying social media post for 5k to benefit such and such or whatever it is. Yeah. And it can generate. Now, is it going to be perfect every time? Absolutely not. It writes like a high schooler struggling to write a paper often, <laughs> is what I found. Now, someone told me there's uh, on the paid version, it it is better. Yeah. So if you're willing to to pay chat GPT, I'm not there yet. I'm a little cheap. I want to see what the free version does till they lock me out, right? <laughs> and then I'll go through the paywall to see what it does. I'm just playing right now just to mm -hmm. see what it does because I'm a writer, right? I can right. rewrite. Right. But I think for a nonprofit, you might get your social posts or get your um, your posts that you evergreen is the word I'm looking for. Julia, I'm having trouble with words already. No, uh, no. The, the, the evergreen post. So you say every third Monday we post about this, every fourth Tuesday we post about that. And you plug them into your calendar or your scheduler. Take those from chat GPT. And then the others are the ones that you hire a blog writer or you have a staff person write or about your mission or pictures of an event that you had along with a little article, that sort of a thing to fill in those blanks on social mm -hmm. and work that with your blog calendar. So if you're, you know, the theme is A, then your social media is about A. Your theme is B, your, your blog theme is B, social media is B and go into chat GPT for each of those to get those evergreen posts and then just reuse them. We don't, I have someone that I follow, I thought closely and she told me that's her secret. She said, oh, I don't come up with original content all the time. I have certain things that I post on certain days and certain times of the month. I said, I follow you and I didn't even know that. And it's a reminder to me, oh yeah, she said something about that last month. I didn't know it was the exact same post. <laughs> You know, and social media posts, not blog posts, social media. Posts. Right. So I was like, what? It speaks to you listening to you really. It, it makes me back up. And, and, and this is something that you've talked with us about before. And that is having that editorial calendar. I mean, looking at chat GPT, obviously as a way to generate some stuff, but it, it, at the end of the day, you still need to have a content direction and a flow and i would also argue it probably would help you to get better chat gpt results because you would be putting in more specific things so for example mother's day is coming up you could say you know talk about how our nonprofit can be support supporting mother's day issues or you know whatever i mean but if you Moms, don't have women, that, yeah yeah if you don't have that editorial calendar i can see where things just kind of become a little bit more nebulous mm -hmm. And then you can focus on, you focus on a particular program or mission, or if you're serving women, then yes, you build up to that Mother's Day. Um, if you, there's a particular time of year that you like to fundraise or you have that gala coming up or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Focus the calendar there. I remember we talked about it. You said, well, what if I, how do I fill my calendar or what if I don't have enough? And I'm like, no, leave that space because we can put in these chat GPT prompts, we can put in other articles, you know what I mean? And it really, I think it could be super helpful for, for nonprofits and for profits to get those, um, to get those prompts. Now always add your own spin. Like for all, if everybody put in social media posts for small businesses in Charlotte and got the same thing I did. <laughs> well, exactly. Well. <laughs> and you know, I think that's, I think that's, you know, coming down the pike. I, I and we talked about that a, a little bit as well in the green room chatter. And that is, you know, you, you, again, goes back to the management, the human management piece of this, but yeah, as we become more and more, um, adept at using this tool and it becomes part of our own system, where do we draw the line between plagiarism, original content and, and, you know, being unique. 
one of the things before we let you go, and we don't have that much time, but you mentioned this, and I'd love for you to help us out a little bit because I know this is something that plagues a lot of us. You talk about ChatGPT helping us to generate hashtags and headlines. Oh, yes. I used ChatGPT. I'm going to this little document because I got to play, Julia. Thanks for letting me, giving me permission to play. <laughs> So I said, okay, let's, we've been traveling a lot this year. So at my request, specifically ChatGPT was hashtags for travel bloggers. Okay. And it said, here are some effective hashtags for travel bloggers that can help increase uh, visibility and engagement on social platforms. It gave me 20. And it said, using these, uh, you can reach a wider audience, but it said also consider region or city specific hashtags, industry specific Mm -hmm. For a nonprofit, it would be mission specific, but it gave me 20 and they're good. So you could take that and pair it with a hashtag generator um, that analyzes hashtags mm -hmm. and see, okay, which of these are the best performing and is there something better? I mean, don't overthink it, but this will give you some hashtags, which I thought was really, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought to use it for that. No. And then in this article, I was like, oh, oh, it will do that. So there's prompts you can put in and just to kind of play it. I spent an hour and I got so much information from it. I was like, okay, I'm going to include this now in my process. Now for headlines, I use a, uh, a I O S E O.com. They have a free headline analyzer tool. They have an article that says, Hey, you need more emotional words in your headline. Here's some ideas. And you can track your different headlines. And it says a score over 70 is better. So add an emotional word, add a power word, you know, untold secrets about the American Red Cross. Like, I don't know, whatever it is to kind of jazz it up. And then it performs better in terms of SEO, but you're not sitting there going, okay, team, we need a jazzy title for our article. <laughs> you write the topic. You get the headliner tool and, you know, or you get that, do the headline and then write it. But ultimately you're answering the same question, no matter the headline, right? And it's, it'll perform better because and, it's got all those words that Google analyzes and you can and use for, AI for that. It, it's for 30 years as a publisher. I can't tell you the, the numbers of hours that my team and I would sit around and come up with headlines. I mean, we would literally, I could, I can see the tables and we would ask the question, no, that's not sexy enough. Well, that's not, you know, juicy enough. Oh, that doesn't really tell the story. I mean, I am fascinated. Can you repeat that, that site again? Sure. It's a I O S E O.com. And I just put in free headline analyzer tool and made free AI headline analyzer tool. It was a little farther to, I really, I love it. I absolutely love it. So you can go play in there. <laughs> I love it. I think that's genius. And I think um, we know, especially with just being barraged day in and day out with all of our digital lives, those headlines become your best tool because if you don't get people to open, if you don't get people to engage, it doesn't matter what your mission is. It doesn't matter how amazing your content is. If you don't get them with that hook, they're moving on to something else. And it's really within seconds. That's what they say. Oh yeah. Uh, use it for your newsletter headline. Yeah. Oh yeah. Share it's, that blog post and that's an easy way to keep in contact too. We've talked about all that repurposing content and all that. Yeah. I mean, it's easy. So instead of your team looking at headlines, now they can actually create content, mm -hmm. do social posts, whatever it is. There's still jobs. Circle yeah. back on that. Still jobs. <laughs> Well, you know, we've only had 30 mi minutes with Anne, um, but she has written a really cool article and you can access it on her blog, agencycontentwriter.com. And I would imagine that there are going to be more articles like this coming down the pike um, from you. But let's ch let's talk chat GPT um, was just posted recently and it's really an interesting look at um, at this process and, and in your blog post, you brought up different ways of using this that I had not considered. And so it's really worth your while to, to take a, a peek at this because um, 
the way you framed it up with how we can use it and how we can maximize this technology um, speaks to a bigger issue of communication. And I thought it was beautifully done. And, and like I said, it really made me think of not just one or two new things, but several new things. And so thank uh -oh, you. For poor that. Kevin. <laughs> I know. I know. My team is like, Julia. This time went so fast, Julia. It's so great to see you. I know. It really is. I You always like totally engage me and get me going and, and get me so excited about um, what our nonprofits do how we do it, but more importantly, how we tell the story, how we communicate, because it's it's such an important part of this overall mission that we that we work on, and it somehow falls to the bottom, and we don't spend enough time on it. So I love 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 your your brain. Hey, another thing, um, Anne McCauley is a published author, and she has this amazing book called We Don't Get to Ring the Bell: My CML Story. You know, and we um, put this up, but we don't really get ever get enough time to talk about it in the very few minutes we have left. Can you share with us your book and, and, and how we get it and what it means? Thank you. I really appreciate that, Julia. Yes, this book is about my story uh, of having a type of leukemia called chronic myeloid leukemia. The reason it's called We Don't Get to Ring the Bell is that uh, for most CML patients, we take a pill to keep us in remission um, and we never get the, okay, you're done with your chemo, you're done with your radiation, We uh, the treatment is to take a pill so we don't we don't ring the bell. Okay. And it's so it's different. It's different than other cancers. And essentially now at my point in my journey, seven years in, it's really uh, how to manage a chronic illness. So I think it speaks to a few different audiences. And it's really just the story of me and how we handled those first few years having CML. And I had just been married for four months uh, and what we what we did to navigate it and how you find a doctor and navigate prescriptions and, and all that fun healthcare stuff that uh, I thought was important to share. Yeah. You know, I love this. Uh... I love that you shared this piece of your life and this part of your life. Um, I think a lot of times in the nonprofit sector, we get so exercised about what it is that we're doing in our mission that a lot of times we forget to circle back to our actual clients and learn about their journeys. And, and, and this goes across the board on all of our sectors within the nonprofit world. And so it's really a rich experience. And of course, who better than a writer, a professional writer? So, I mean, it's a really amazing thing. Um, and thank you for sharing that story with us. It, it's, thank really, you. it's really, really powerful. Anne McCauley Lopez, CEO, content writer with agency, content uh, writer. Amazing, amazing free resources on her website, agencycontentwriter.com. Check it out because there's so much knowledge that Anne is beautifully articulated that will help your nonprofit and your management of it, no matter where you are on the trajectory of your work. It's a remarkable thing. And I go back to your site often to kind of sometimes refresh or, you know, I'll remember something and I'll be like, yeah, how did you navigate this? And so great, great pieces of information. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, will be back with us shortly. Um, <clears throat> as she likes to say, She's everybody's nonprofit nerd. I claim her as my own personal nonprofit nerd, but she can be yours too. And again, we have amazing sponsors and they are with us day in and day out. They include the folks at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out. And again, and Macaulay Lopez, you are part of that family with us today, being a nonprofit thought leader. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julia. It's great to see you. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, get don't be afraid of chat GPT. Be looking into it. I, I think that's, for me, that's my message today that I received from you. For sure, for sure. Bloggers aren't going away. Writers <laughs> still have jobs. We're all good. <laughs> We can use the technology with our other in our toolboxes, right? And and reach the people we want to reach. 
I agree, Ann. I agree. Hey, everybody, another great episode of The Nonprofit Show. And as we end every episode, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests, our sponsors, I should add them too, to stay well so you can do well. So you can do well. <laughs>